So you may have noticed that I don't have a huge game collection, and I'll tell you why. It's because I'm cheap. Most of the games that you see in my collection are games that I had when I was a kid or when the system was originally released, like, uh, you know, the Atari stuff or the Nintendo stuff, the Sega Genesis stuff. All of the games that I have are those that I bought when the system was new. I don't generally, you know, seek games out on eBay or go to flea markets or trade shows or things like that. There's a few Atari games that I bought off of an eBay collection one time a long time ago, but again, I don't generally collect games. And as I said, the main reason is just because they're expensive. And it really wasn't like that, you know, about 10 years ago or so, maybe 15. You could just go into any store or flea market or whatever and pick up a copy of Super Mario 3 for, you know, five bucks or whatever it was. And now it's just astronomically expensive. It's ridiculous. Good deals are really, really hard to find these days. And, you know, I don't get them from the stores. Don't go to eBay or online marketplaces or anything like that. Or don't go to flea markets and I don't go to Goodwill because... Pretty much all of them have figured out that games today are somewhat valuable. They all have internet, they can all browse and look around and see what the value of a particular game is, and a lot of them think they have a gold mine. I remember seeing eBay auctions for Ataris that said, you know, super rare Atari video game console, which everybody who collects games knows that the Ataris were pretty common and <laughs> they shouldn't be going for $500 or something stupid like that. I mean, even now, have you seen an Atari Pac-Man cartridge going for less than two bucks? I mean, come on, it, it's a common game. I mean, you might get lucky at a garage sale and hope that the lady selling her son's old video game stuff has no idea what the value is, but again, it's getting, getting more and more difficult for that to happen. Take a look at Super Mario Brothers or any other common game on PriceCharting.com and you'll see how that price has just kind of gone up and up and up over the years. And it has way outpaced inflation too, so um, I, I guess just people think their games are valuable, I'm not sure. Of course, one reason why game prices have gone up ridiculously lately is because of uh, these graded games that are trying to jack up the price. You know, they try to sell a rare game for $1,000 or something like that. Nintendo sold 40 million copies of Super Mario Brothers. It is not rare. WADA is grading these common games as rare and selling them for astronomical prices. I, I just have a huge problem with that. Not just because it's ruining the market, but it's, you know, it's really a shady kind of practice to be doing that kind of stuff. Plus, it makes people think that their, you know, kind of worthless games are actually something of high value. It just, it just messes everything up. So that's the primary reason why I don't collect games. It's just the prices are just too crazy. Another reason why I don't collect games is because, to be perfectly honest with you, they don't get played. For me, a lot of the games are just, you know, they're just shelf candy or trophies or, you know, a prop for a, another video that I'm going to make. If I play Unreal Hardware now, it's it's usually on an EverDrive or something like that, which is great because you can get them for, you know, maybe less than 200 bucks and you can put every game on there that you ever wanted to play. You can play hacked games, you can play pirate games. It's a really good way to go if you're interested in playing the games and not necessarily collecting them. Plus, it's also a great way to play games that I'm never gonna be able to acquire. I mean, come on. I'll never get to play a real Action 52 or a real Cheetah Men. Not that I really want to, but <laughs> a lot of collectors feel that they need to collect every game and it's it's just so impossible especially if they're trying to collect every game in the box i mean i guess it's kind of a fun worthwhile thing to do in your spare time but uh, you know honestly i i have other things that i'd rather do than spend my money on games that are just going to be sitting on a shelf and you know i guess there's a certain amount of clout that you have by saying hey you know i've got this nintendo world championship cartridge but to me it's just I don't know, I'm, I'm not I'm not seeking that kind of clout. So yeah, I play pretty much all of my stuff on EverDrive, but to be honest, there's other ways to play it if you don't want to spend, you know, 200 bucks on an EverDrive. I mean, they're very nice to play them on real hardware, so you're getting the accurate gameplay, whereas emulation has a tendency to have a little bit of lag behind it. Playing on an EverDrive is going to be perfect, as though you were playing it with a real cartridge. But you know, emulation will get you by. You know, you can emulate pretty much any system on a PC or a Mac, or you know, you can use a Raspberry Pi with RetroPie. And as I said, there's a little bit of lag, but you know, it can scratch that itch if you're dying to play a game that you haven't played in 20 years and you just can't get a copy of it anymore. Like for me, Contra is one of my favorite games of all time. And every time I try to pick up a copy of Contra, which I wouldn't mind having a real copy of Contra in my collection, it's always just too expensive. I just don't, I just don't see 
spending that kind of money on a game that I could play perfectly on a, on an EverDrive or an emulation machine. And you don't even need to play them on your PC or Mac or Raspberry Pi. I mean, some of them even could be played through the eShops of your uh, PS4 or Xbox or Nintendo or whatever. They have collections. Like, I have the uh, Contra collection on my PS4. And it's great. It's a great way to play all the Contra games. You know, a lot of the other companies will do collections as well, like Namco and Sega and Konami. And Sega had a collection for the Xbox 360, I think is just fantastic, for the Genesis. Also, you could acquire a mini console, like the Sega Genesis Mini or the NES Classic or the Super NES Classic. And if you wanted to, you could even mod them and add more games. There's so many different ways to play the classic games. You don't actually have to go out and buy them and uh, break the bank. <laughs> And lastly, I was thinking about if the games ever did come down in price, would I want to start collecting? And maybe, if I could get a copy of Super Mario 3 for five bucks or something like that, I'd probably do it. I, you know, it's, it's kind of hard not to when it's that cheap. So I keep hoping that the bubble is going to burst on these really super high priced games. But to be honest with you, I, I just don't see that happening. And I think a lot of it is because, you know, if someone who went out and bought a game for some crazy amount of money, 150 bucks, or something like that in the box with a, a manual maybe they're not going to want to turn around and sell it for 20 bucks down the road they're going to want to just hold on to it they might as well just hold on to it if they spent that kind of money so i don't i just don't see the bubble bursting on the retro collection scene i think it's just going to stay where it is and uh, you know we're just going to have to live with it But I'm perfectly happy playing my games on my EverDrives and mini consoles and computers and things like that. If I ever happen to come across a game that is a fairly cheap price, fairly decent price, then yeah, I'll go ahead and do it. But for the most part, I'm just going to stay out of <laughs> spending all my hard-earned money on uh, pieces of plastic that are going to sit on the shelf and just be trophies for the most part. So anyway, those are my thoughts about retro gaming collecting. What are your thoughts? Please leave them down in the comments below. I thank you for watching. Take care, and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye, everybody.